Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a custom background for your photos in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today we're doing something really cool. We're basically taking a graphic that's in our photograph and I'm going to show you guys how to like cut that out, copy it over onto a new layer and then we're going to be doing something really cool called a step and repeat and that's what we're going to be able, be able to use to basically like create a really cool tiled background and then I'm going to show you guys how to put that background back into the photo. Um, really, really cool. Let's get into it. All right, here's our image, and this is Renee's image. Really just, I, I love everything about this. The makeup, the hair, the colors, and it's already been edited pretty well, so I don't want to like mess with the editing. That's why I'm just going to show you something kind of on top of it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool, and basically I'm going to sample this earring, because I want, I want to create the, like a pattern that looks like this earring is going to be repeating on the background. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit S for the clone stamps, tool. I'm going to sample here and I'm making sure I got current and below checked. That's just going to make sure I, I'm actually sampling the background as well as whatever it would be on this layer. So I'm going to sample that area and just paint just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this a bit bigger by hitting command T and then I'm just going to hit shift and control and size that up a little bit. Okay. So now we've got our earring and you can see it doesn't really look that good right now because whenever you scale something up like quite a bit larger in Photoshop, it's just got so much pixels to work with. So if you scale it up a lot, it's just going to lose a lot of uh, information there. So what are we going to do instead? We're going to make this a little more abstract. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to grab my lasso tool and instead of like trying to use the original earring, I'm just going to make my points here. There we go. basically like it was original lasso tool. Oh, that doesn't look that good, does it? All right, let's start down here. We'll go up there, go over there, and then maybe we'll go to that point. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. So that's gonna be our lightning bolt. Now, on this layer, I'm gonna hit Shift, Delete, and we're gonna fill that with white. All right, so this is our lightning bolt, and we can, we can move it around and do really whatever we want with it. Now, we've already created this, so let's go ahead and delete this guy over here. And I'm going to hit Command T on this just to rotate it to the side. So lightning bolts always come from the side. Everybody knows that. All right, there we go. And stretch it out a little bit more. Now, this is really good. And it's going to look really cool on our background. But it's so big. I, I do want to like repeat this over and over again. But it's so big that I'm not going to be able to repeat it a whole lot. Because if I repeat this a few times to the right, it's going to start getting cut off on the side. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys a quick tip. Just right click here. We can go to Duplicate Layer, and I'm going to go down here to New. OK, so that's going to put this on a new layer. And then what we can do is I can go to like Edit, and we can go to, sorry, Image. We can go to Canvas Size, and then I can stretch this canvas so I could actually, like, I have a lot of space now to work with, and then I can just duplicate this back on the image. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go up here to Percent, Width and the Height Percentage. I'm just going to hit 500% Width and 500% Height. So it's going to get quite a bit larger. And you can see we still have our little uh, lightning bolt there. I'm going to hit Command-I just so you can see it a little bit better. OK, so that's our lightning bolt. Now, I'm going to hit Command-J on that because whenever I do a step and repeat, I always like to have a duplicate copy. So that way, if I don't like what I did with the step and repeat, it's not a big deal. I can always come back to it. So now we're going to actually show you the step and repeat of how to create the background. So our lightning bolt here, what we're going to do is I'm going to hold down Command or Control and click on the layer. And that's just going to turn it into a selection. Like you can see the marching ants here, right? So that's an important step. Go ahead and make that into a selection. And then you want to hold Option and Command and hit T. Option, Command, T. And that's going to start the step part of the step and repeat. OK, so now that that's there, basically you just want to move it around to you know wherever you want your end final product to be. All right, and then we just, I just put it there. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, it you can do any type of transformation you want. You can rotate, you can scale, you can skew. I'm just doing just a, a move to the right and down. So we're going to hit Enter now that that's applied. So the cool thing about this step and repeat is that was the step. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing over and over and over again, instead of just having to like guess at it, like, oh, I'll just put it kind of over there, all you have to do, let's just zoom out so you can see this, I can hit Shift, Option, Command, and T. And every time I hit T, it's going to do the exact same thing over and over and over again. All right, so let's go ahead and hit, give it a try. So T, T, T. I've got Shift, Option, and Command held down on my, with my left hand. 
So that's pretty cool. Basically, it's just giving me the same thing over and over again. And I've got such a large canvas now I can work with. So we're going to try it again. I'm going to hit hold down Control or Command, select that, Option Command T to start the step. And we're going to bring this down and just right over there. Why not? Hit Enter there and Shift Option Command T. And again, each time I'm hitting T, we're getting a new thing. So if you wanted to create like a herringbone or like a hound's tooth pattern or something like that, this would be a cool way to do it. Um, in this case, I'm using lightning bolts. I'm going to show you guys another one just because why not? <laughs> and that's why I always do this duplicate. So again, I'm going to duplicate this layer so we have another lightning bolt. Like if you wanted to hold down command on that and hit option command T and then let's bring our point here and then like bring that around. Let's just bring it around by 30 degrees. Hit enter, shift option command T. And now each time I hit T, it's going to bring it around another 30 degrees. So you could do that to make a pattern like that. And then, of course, again, you could hold down Command and click on that. Option Command T. You could bring that over here to the right and then make another one. So you can continue to do this. And then you could Option click that, Option Command T. There we go. So you can see from like one lightning bolt, you can get a really cool pattern. All right, I'm going to show you one more, just so you can see like the possibilities for this are pretty much endless. Duplicate of that. So we're going to, again, we want to select the layer that we're actually on. Because if you don't select it, it's just going to keep making new layers every single time you do a transformation. And it, it just gets busy. You don't want to do that. OK, so now Option Command T. And I'm going to hold Shift and Option. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. And we're going to bring this over to the right. There we go. And now Shift, Option, Command, T. And now it's going to get smaller as well each time I do that. Pretty cool. So I can hit, again, Option, click our layer. There we go. Option, Command, T for the transform. Let's just bring it down there. And that's kind of cool there. Why not? And then we can just do something like that. Very cool. And that's all out of a, like a lightning bolt, basically. So there's really just anything you guys want to do, just play around here. This is the time to play around. And I recommend using like a really large canvas like this so you do have all that space to carry or play around. OK, so now that we've got, this is the one I pretty much I know I want to use. So this is the one we're going to copy over. I'm just going to click and drag from one layer to the other. And now check this out. I don't have to worry about like, see, if you try to do a step and repeat and something goes off of your canvas, it won't actually create that pattern there. Like it'll it'll cut off. But now I can actually move this around and do whatever I want with it. OK, so we're going to change this from normal down here to soft light. And that's just going to give us a, like a little different of a pattern. Now, right now I've got this on. It's just black. But if I want to like make it red or something like that, I could double click here. And we could go to something like a color overlay. And there we go. We could make it red, the color overlay. Well, that changes the layer effect. So we're not going to do it that way unless you did want to do it. Another cool way to change the color is I'm going to lock the transparency of this layer. And I'm going to just choose a nice red color. And I'm going to hold Alt or Option and hit Delete. There we go. So that's as a soft light. And instead of black, it's red. And I think I like that a little bit more. We're just going to lower the opacity a little, a little bit on that. OK, very cool. And you can see this is our original lightning bolt that we started with there. So now that we've got our lightning bolt, we stepped and repeated. I'm going to sh show you how to do all that. What we're going to do is just basically put a layer mask on here. And I'm just going to paint black. Let's just grab our regular uh, regular. I'm going to grab my regular lasso tool. We're going to grab our regular lasso tool and just kind of make a selection right inside of here. OK. And on my layer mask, I'm just going to fill this with black and hit Shift Delete with that. And then I'm going to grab my brush tool and just paint the rest out. The reason, sometimes I just use the brush tool for the entire thing. Sometimes I'll grab like a lasso tool. The reason is like some, I tend to miss things when you're just kind of like painting around with the brush tool. Um, you know, sometimes you'll miss a little bit, little area in the middle or something like that. So this is just kind of my, my way to not miss anything. All right. And I'm doing a relatively quick masking job on this. Basically what we're doing is on our layer mask, we're just painting black wherever our subject is and we want it to be white where our subject is not. All right. I'm doing a relatively quick job here, but obviously um, you guys can go and spend a little bit more time 
when you're working on your image. This is just a tutorial, so I don't need to spend an hour and a half masking her up. There we go. Very cool. So now we have this as the background of our image. Now the last thing I want to show you, and something that I think is really cool, we're going to unlink the actual layer and the layer mask. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to move each one of those things independently. It's something, if you don't know about this, it's about to change your uh, life. <laughs> Maybe not that dramatic, but you'll think it's cool. OK, so here's a little chain link between the layer and the layer mask. I'm going to unclick that. And now if I use my move tool, let's just start by clicking on a layer mask. We can see that I can move my layer mask around. And that's usually not that useful. But what is cool is I can move my layer around. So as I click on my layer, I can actually move my layer around. And you can see how that's going to be changed. That like, you know, totally changes things. The other cool thing is I can hit Command T. And if, like, if I think this pattern is too large or too small, I can actually transform it. So I'm going to hit Command T and then lock my width and my height. And then I can make my pattern a little bit smaller. So if like I wanted a tighter pattern, I could do that. Or if I wanted it a little bit bigger, I could do that. Or even bigger, I could do that. And my layer mask stays in place. And if my layer mask wasn't, was perfect, you wouldn't see these like overlaps, things like that. So that's a really, really cool way. After you get something in place, just keep your layer mask where it is. And then you can transform the layer itself and get your really cool effects. And that's it. I think it's a really cool effect. So just adding that little bit of background in there kind of like makes it more like 80s pizzazz, and um, this is the kind of stuff that I love. So I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching Flurn. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can catch up on more of these, and leave us a comment down below. Um, oh yeah, we've got a workshop coming up in the Bahamas, and it's going to be amazing. Basically, I'm teaching a workshop to a very small select people at Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas. We'll put a link on the screen so you guys can find out more information and sign up for the classes. It's going to be amazing. Like, really, really amazing. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll Flurn you later. <laughs> Bye. I didn't know how to end that one. I think I did it good, though. What do you think? Did I do it good? Did you like it? Was it good for you?